Praise the Lord. Uh, I welcome all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, I want us to read Revelation 5 and to exhort the Lord Jesus before we start to hear his word. Amen. So, Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, it says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll with writing on both sides and seal with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and, and eat seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, slain, standing at the center of the throne and circled by the four living creatures and the elders. Jump to the verse 9. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain with and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be king, a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Amen. They jump again to the verse 12. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who, wo who was slain to receive power, wealth, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and praises. So this morning, the Lord Jesus Christ is worthy to receive our praise, is worthy to receive our worship. Hallelujah. So this morning, let your heart be a heart of exhortation, a heart of gratitude out of what God has done for us. Begin to praise Him wherever you are. Begin to praise Him wherever you are. Exhort Him in the mighty name of Jesus. Exhort the Father in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus because His Son, God became a Son. He is worthy to take the scroll and see its content. Therefore, He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Our Lord God is worthy. He is worthy in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, omnipotent and eternal God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are worthy to take the scroll and see its content and to break its seals. You are worthy. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, you are worthy. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We exhort you. We exhort you. We magnify you. We exhort you. We magnify you. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. You are worthy because no one can be compared unto you. No one was found in heaven on earth beneath the earth. Worthy to take the scroll and to see it content and to break it. But Jesus, you are worthy. That is why this morning. Him, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come and take your rightful position in us. It is your gospel, it is your kingdom. Therefore, go ahead of us in your wisdom, in your power and adoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord, my God, as your word comes, may your people embrace your word wherever they are falling short. My Lord, my God, quicken them by your Holy Spirit to have a transformed mind and a mind of repentance, a mind to change each mindset and each attitude towards the word of God. I thank you and I bless your holy name. Spirit of God, power of God, might of God, holy war angels of God, go ahead of us in that consuming fire and signs and wonders in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God richly bless each and everyone who has come on this broadcast. Please do share it to bless others also. The Lord richly bless you. Amen. Today's uh, topic is how shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect such great a salvation? 
how shall we escape if we neglect such great a salvation? Please let us open our Bible to Hebrew 2 verse 3. Amen. Hebrew chapter 2 verse 3. It says, How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord Jesus, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. We pause there. The rest we'll read later. Amen. What does all this mean? Firstly, he says, How shall we transgress us? How shall we sinners of the law of God? How shall people who ignore, who break the law of God, how shall we escape the judgment of God? How shall we escape the judgment of God? Sinners, how shall we escape the judgment of God? We those who transgress the known law, the known laws of God, words of God, how shall we escape God's judgment? When we neglect or ignore such a great salvation that saves us from what? God's judgment. Amen. So this is to the whole world, to everyone who needed to be saved. Anyone who has seen his position as a sinner not worthy to enter into heaven, he should come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he has brought a salvation that saves sinners from God's righteous judgment. His righteous judgment, when he judged the sinner, he condemned them. Amen? That is his righteous ju judgment. So how shall we escape the righteous judgment of God when we neglect and ignore the salvation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Human beings cannot escape God's judgment because we are all sinners. That is the truth, my brothers and sisters. All human beings are sinners. For the Bible says that, for we all have fallen short of the glory of God Amen? Because of sin. Amen? So that is it. All human beings have fallen short of God's righteous standard. Therefore, we are not qualified to enter into the glory, eternal heaven. We are not qualified. But God, through his mercies and love and his kindness, has made a way out. He has brought us a good news, a good news of the kingdom of heaven. That when you believe that God becomes man in the flesh of Jesus Christ and atone for your sins on the cross of Calvary, you will be saved. So, the means to be saved is by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So how shall we escape God's righteous judgment on sinners? We who broke the law of God. We who ignore the no word of God. How shall we escape God's righteous judgment? If we neglect, ignore such a great salvation like this. Amen. However, God mysteriously has made a way out when he himself carried, carried our punishment uh, and our punishment and sin on the cross. So God mysteriously became man in the person of Jesus Christ. He went on the cross of Calvary and he punished your sin, my sin, the sins of the world, the sins of our forefathers. He punished that, uh, those sins in his body on the cross. So God created a body for himself and he punished all the sins of this world on the cross. So that is the mystery work of God. So you have to believe in this mysterious work of God. It is the work of salvation. When you believe, then you are saved. And that leads us to Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Galatians 3 verse 13. It says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessings given to 
uh, uh, Abraham might come to the Gentile through Jesus Christ, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, Christ redeemed us on the cross of Calvary. This you must believe. People in the world believe that Jesus Christ came on the earth as a prophet. They also believe that he didn't die on the cross. This is totally wrong doctrine. Amen? This is totally wrong doctrine. Because Jesus, God Almighty, has to become a man and die for our sins. Amen? He has to die for our sins. That is why it is very necessary that you come through the cross of Calvary. Amen. And salvation began on the cross of Calvary. Praise the name of the living God. So he redeemed us on the cross of Calvary. He took the penalty of the law. Jesus took the penalty of the law, which is death, on the cross. Therefore, you must come to Jesus having faith in the cross of Calvary. Amen. Therefore, how, how shall we ignore such a great salvation? Amen. If you ignore such a great salvation, you will not escape the judgment of sinners. Anyone, just anyone, whoever will not accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, the great salvation of Jesus Christ, that person will face the judgment of sinners. And the judgment of sinners is what? Is death. Is eternal death. Is eternal separation from, from, from God Almighty. Amen. Amen. And when you are separated from God Almighty, believe me, you are in a big problem. Amen. Because God sustained everything by his powerful words. And to in order to grow and to mature and to live eternally, you must be in God and you must be in his kingdom. So how can you separate yourself from God? That is why my brothers and sisters out there, come to the Lord Jesus come to the cross, have faith in him and have faith in what he has done for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me give you an example. How would a fish feel when that fish is taken out of water? How will a, a tree feel when it's taken out of the soil? You see, the fish becomes unhappy, very worried. The fish Will be, uh, will be starving because the fish proper dominion, proper place, yeah, natural place is in the water. So when you take the fish out of the water, it dies. The same applies to us. God breathed his breath into us. We became a living soul. And therefore, God is the sustainer. He is the uh, eternal water in which we live and dwell and have life so when you are separated from him you don't have life again and you become you experience hell amen a fish experiences hell when it's out of water that is why you must come to jesus so that you receive eternal salvation praise the name of the living god so how shall we ignore such a salvation if you ignore it you face the judgment of sinners, which is death. Praise the name of the living God. The same Galatians 4, verse 5 to 7. Galatians 4, verse 5 to 7. It says, But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son. Amen? God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship because you are sons. God sent the spirit of his son into our heart, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer slaves, but God's, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also a heir. Amen. All that this passage is saying that all human beings were under the law of God. 
whether you know it or you don't know, this law applies to everyone. And at the right time, when the condition, the atmosphere, the air have reached its what? Maximum wisdom. God became man in the person of Jesus Christ, born under the law in order to rescue, save those who are under the law because the transgressors of the law is death. And therefore, he came to save us from death. How? He replaced our place on the cross because normally it is sinners, thieves, and robbers, prostitutes, amen, adulterers. Those people are to be stoned and are to be hanged. But Jesus said, no, leave them. I will go on the cross for them. And therefore, Jesus Christ rescued us rescue us, save us, deliver us on the cross of Calvary. That is why you must believe in the cross of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. And since he has done that for us, we cry with the same spirit of Jesus Christ and say, Abba Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Abba Father, into your hands I commit myself and all that I do. For that reason, you are equal a hair. What does this word mean? This word means a legal person who inherits property. So God has made us a legal inheritance of power and authority to overcome sins and the practices of this world. This is very important to understand the word here. Amen? Here is a legal person who inherits a property from their ancestors and God has made us here partakers of the authority and power of Jesus Christ to overcome sin, death, and the practices of this world. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Therefore, how can you ignore such great a salvation? People out there ignoring the salvation of Jesus Christ. The warning is that you will face the punishment of sinners. And the punishment of sinners, it is not nice. It is death, separation from eternal heaven. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you will escape hell. Amen. It is written, it is written in uh, Hebrew 1, verse 1 to uh, 4. It says that, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophet and many times through angels. But in the last day, he has appointed to us by, by his son, who, who is the legal owner of all things. So Jesus Christ is the legal owner of all things. And through him, he made the universe. That made him the legal owner of everything. Verse 3. The son is the radiance of God's glory and exact representation of his being. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification of sins, he sat down at his rightful position as the majestic one in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he had, uh, he has, he has inherited is superior than this. Amen. Please listen. God spoke to our ancestors through the prophet and angels, and the message the prophet and angels brought were binding unto them. Anyone who transgressed or disobeyed that law, they were stoned instantly unto death. So, even the, the message the angels and the prophet brought were binding. It takes effect, a serious effect. In people's life, where you see women, they are being stoned. You see people, they are being stoned. They are being uh, uh, hanged and killed. And those were the words of prophets and angels. How much more? The Bible says that Jesus Christ preached his own gospel. The Lord God Almighty became human being and he preached the way of salvation to human being. If the words of angels and prophets were binding and were killing people, then God has brought you a good news that come to God Almighty through Jesus Christ and your sins are forgiven and you are saved. If you ignore this a great salvation, you will not escape eternal hell. You will not escape the judgment of sinners. 
So Jesus is has has a name superior in heaven on earth beneath, a name above prophet, a name above what angels. So if you disobey his word and his salvation, you will surely face eternal condemnation and eternal judgment. Who will send you to what to hell? God doesn't want any human being, any soul, to enter into hell. Hell is for Satan, folly angels who disobey God. But if you come to follow the way of Satan, then you go to the destiny of Satan. So let us come to God and inherit the destiny of God. Come to Jesus and you inherit the destiny of Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, this is not to throw you away. This is to call you back into the kingdom of God so that you will have a renewed mind, a renewed character, a renewed life and live upright and do what is good. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. All things be equal, Jesus had made a way out of sin and out of hell. Hallelujah. How shall we escape hell? Amen. We will escape hell when we accept the, the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Jesus Christ of Nazareth paid the penalty of your sin on the cross of Calvary. Therefore, if you want to be reconciled with God, because it is only sin that separated us from, from the presence of God. It is only sin. So if you want to be reconciled to God, then you must come to Jesus through the cross of Calvary. Because through the cross of Calvary, there is forgiveness of sins in the blood of the Lamb. And what he forgives you is as if you have never seen before. You are holy. You are righteous. Therefore, you can, re you can be reconciled to God again and live a life of joy. And you find joy in the word of God. You find joy in the Holy Spirit. You find joy in prayer. You find joy in studying the word of God. Yes. He reconciled you to God and feed your soul with the word of God, which glorifies and beautifies the spirit man. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Therefore, all people, all human beings, must have faith in the cross of Jesus Christ. That God, through Jesus Christ, redeem you and redeem me through the cross. So, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we receive forgiveness of sins. Ephesians 1 verse 7. It says, Ephesians 1 verse 7. It says, In Christ Jesus, we have redemption through his blood. Where were you redeemed? Through what did you have redemption? To redeem me to buy back with the exact amount, the ransom amount paid for sinners is the cross of Calvary. So Jesus redeemed us through his blood. The forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So please listen. It means the riches of God's grace for you is to receive forgiveness of sin. This is marvelous. This is wow. This is lovely. This is so compassion of God. God doesn't want you to go to hell. That is why the riches of God's grace that you receive forgiveness of sin because sin will lead you to hell. God doesn't want you to go to hell. So his grace, sufficiency, his riches of his grace is that you will receive forgiveness of your sin through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you will receive also eternal life. This is marvelous. How can we or how shall we ignore such a salvation? If you ignore it, if you neglect it, you will not miss hell. Praise the name of the living God. Amen? In fact, no human being can meet God's righteous standard. I say it again. No human being can meet God's righteous standard for he has already declared. Amen? The wages of sin is dead and all have fall short of the righteous standard of God because of sin. Therefore, no human being can meet God's righteous standard but except except through the free justification by faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have received a free justification, a free uh, making right 
through his blood, we, God has made us right with himself. As if we have not committed any sin. But we have committed sin and these sins were punished in the Lord Jesus. Amen? So we only receive this forgiveness of sin and free justification because someone carried our sin. Someone carried our punishment. And that person is the Lord Jesus. God Almighty became a human being and put on flesh in order to carry your sins for you. How can you neglect such a great salvation? If you neglect this salvation, you end up in hell. Amen. And God doesn't want you to end up in hell. So he's calling you to come and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Praise the name of the living God. Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 24. Amen. Romans 3, 21 verse 24. It says, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known. So look at this, apart from the law. So it means the law even which kills, yet still it brings out the righteousness of God. Because when he said, that shall not murder. When you murder, yeah, it shows that you are wicked and you are unrighteous. So the law is righteous and is good. Amen? Has been made known. To which the law and the prophet testify. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ. So believe it, my brothers and sisters. The righteousness that we believe as Christians, citizens in the kingdom of God, the righteousness we have received, it is through faith in Jesus Christ. It is found in Jesus Christ. This righteousness, it is found in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, Therefore, it is very, very important that you have faith and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be in order to be a part of this glorious righteousness of Christ Jesus. Amen. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that uh, that came by Jesus Christ. So, in this world rich or poor, Jew or Christian, amen, all religion, all human beings will be judged in the same way so that the God that we serve, it is not, he is not partial, amen, the same way for salvation is for the rich and the poor, the same, praise the name of the living God, that we might believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and we will receive a free justification uh, by his grace through the redemption that comes by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So, anyone, amen. Uh -huh. so, so, you must receive this free justification by faith. This is, this is faith. Amen. So, faith is the, is the currency to receive this free justification and to receive uh, this uh, free uh, set apart, amen, from sin. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So you must have faith. You know, faith is the currency of obtaining things in the realm of the spirit. If you don't have faith, you cannot hold, receive anything in the realm of the spirit. Therefore, you must have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And salvation is by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary so that we can do good works. So when you are not doing good works, then there's a question mark about you. So, my brothers and sisters, salvation is by faith for the rich and for the poor. It is be, if it is because of physical money, the rich people will buy salvation and the poor people will not inherit salvation, will not in inherit eternal heaven. Amen? But God being a just God, a faithful God, unpartial God, has made the way of salvation the same. It is by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary to do good works. Praise the name of the living God. So you can see a lot of rich people when they believe they'll go to heaven. You will see a lot of poor people when they believe and have faith they'll go to heaven. It's the same way for each and every one. Amen. Anyone who neglects the saving grace of Jesus Christ will face hell. Anyone, just anyone 
Whoever will not accept, will neglect, will reject, will ignore the saving grace of Jesus Christ will face hell. Amen? Anyone who is living in sin will face hell. If you are living in sin, you will face hell. Anyone who makes fun of the gospel of Jesus Christ, hell will make fun of that person. Because it's the gospel that saves you from hell. Amen? If you are an armed robber, let's give you an example. If an armed robber, a thief, an imposter, a murderer, an idol worshiper, adulterous, amen, have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and they refuse to repent from those practices, they neglect this gospel, all these people will go to hell. But if an adulterer, a fornicator, an idol worshiper, a thief, an armed robber, amen, a corrupted person accept the Lord Jesus Christ. He is transformed from all those practices. He does not go to those practices again. And therefore, he, he, he or she is saved from those wickedness. So, amen? He or she is saved from those wickedness. Because those things, adultery, adult worship, fornication, uh, medra, thieves, arm robbery, imposter, tricksters, all those things will lead a person to die in sin. But when we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, you accept it, you change your mind from those things, you are saved. Amen? So it is very, very important that you come out of sin as a believer. Come out of sin. The Lord Jesus Christ is warning you because we are in evil times where evil people are shooting around, killing people uh, in an untimely death. Amen? So you don't know when misfortune will happen to you. It doesn't, God forbid that it happen to any one of us. But if it happened, where is your state? Are you living in sin? So my brothers and sisters, come out of sin. The pleasures of sin is for only a minute. It passes away. It vanishes. But the joy of the Lord is eternal. Therefore, come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved. Let us read uh, John 8 verse 11. The gospel of Jesus Christ saves physically and eternally. The gospel of Jesus Christ saves physically and eternally. Let's read John. John 8 verse 11. It says, Please, if you have time, you know the story. Amen? Okay, let me summarize the story. This woman, this adulterous woman, was caught right-handed committing adultery with another man. And the law requires that they stone her to death. Please listen. My sisters and my brothers in the law, please listen. This woman was caught in adultery. And the law of Moses required that she is Stoned to death. So, I ask you, what is the state of this woman? She's already dead in the mind of the people because their stones were ready. They were ready to cast out this stone to kill her. So, this woman was already dead in her sin. Apply this to you. Apply it to me. Apply it to everyone that is listening. We are all dead in our sins. But when Jesus Christ who, 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 uh, who is the grace of God, appear on the stage, he asked the people, any one of you who has not seen before, if you are without a sin, then cast the first stone. And because the word of God is true, for all have seen, they all vanished by the word of God. Because God knew their heart and all of them have seen, and some of them even might have committed adultery unknowingly. So, they did not stone, stone this woman. And the Lord Jesus Christ asked the woman, Where are those who wanted to condemn you? She looked around. She said, No one there. Then Jesus Christ said, I too will not condemn you. Amen? But go and leave your life of sin away. Go and sin no more. So, please look at this critically. God Almighty did not come into this world to condemn sinners. No, 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 no. It is never God's intention to condemn sinners. He condemns sin, but not sinners. 
because we are victim of the corruption of this world corrupted by satan and corrupted by practices we are victim therefore god is not condemning us but he is saving us from the sin so when he saves you from that sin he tells you that go and see no more god is speaking to someone this morning god is saying go and see no more he doesn't want to condemn you to hell he said he has forgiven you through the blood of jesus therefore go and see no more do go don't go and live in the same lifestyle again because you were already dead this woman they carried the soul if jesus christ would not have intervened they would have killed her so she was already dead the same applied to you, the same applied to me. We were dead in the transgressions of our sins. And by grace, he saves us through faith to do good works. Therefore, do not go out again to go and do to go and commit adultery and fornication. Don't go and sell yourself. Don't go and kill. Don't go uh, and extort money from people. Don't trick people. Don't play on people's intelligence. Find a, 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 a recruitable job and do. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So Jesus Christ saved us from hell. How shall we ignore such a great salvation? Can you look at it? He saved this woman. He saved this woman from death. How can this woman ignore such a great salvation who says that go and see no more? Amen. In fact, the altar of our salvation is God becoming a man. That makes it so superior, that makes it so powerful that when you ignore, you are in trouble. The altar of our salvation is God becoming a man, God becoming a son, who is superior than angel. How shall we neglect or ignore such a great salvation? Because this is God's way of saving humanity from every corruption and every defilement of spirit, soul, and body. It is God's way. His word is more binding than angels and prophets. Amen. So, if you neglect the salvation of Jesus Christ, you will land in hell. Hell is not for you, but you will land there because you have followed the way of Satan. Amen? The gospel of Jesus Christ saves you from danger. How does the gospel of Jesus Christ save someone from danger? Let us assume an armed robber is going to rob somebody with gun and with pistol or with knife. And the person that armed robber is going to rob, that person is also hot, is also armed. And he has cameras everywhere. Before the thief approached, he already shot the thief, uh, the armed robber, to death. But when this gospel says that, do not go and steal, do not go and rob. When you obey this word, he saves you from the danger of someone killing you. When the gospel says, do not commit adultery. When you don't commit adultery, you are saved from what? Uh, 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 sexual sicknesses from HIV. You are saved from a, a bad spirit from that person you slept with. You are saved from, from that tormenting spirit. Amen. So when you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, it saves you from danger. Amen. It saves you from bitterness. It saves you from unforgiveness. It saves you from corruption and bribery. It saves you from wickedness. It saves you from hatred. And it saves you from eternal hell. Praise the name of the living God. However, if you remain in your wickedness after hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news that saves you, then when you die one day, you go to hell because you have neglected the salvation of Jesus Christ who says that you are saved from your wickedness. Therefore, do not go into wickedness again. Some people don't want to hear this. They only want to hear only miracle, miracle, and give me, and give me that, and provide that. No, that is what surplus. The miracles and the provisions are surplus. This is the real thing to live upright and live a holy life. Amen. Amen. So it is about time now that you make up your mind and change your mindset concerning your life, concerning your practices, and concerning all that you do. Amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Apostle Paul says, 
I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Please consider this word from Apostle Paul. He is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. In what mind was Apostle Paul when he was speaking this word? Please listen. Apostle Paul was a murderer. He witnessed the stoning of, uh, of Philip. Uh, no, the stoning of uh, Stephen. He witnessed the stoning of Stephen. Even he what? He, he supervised and he took care of the clothing of the people because they have to remove their clothes and keep it so that they don't tarnish their clothes with blood. Amen. He witnessed it. He supported it. And he chased the believers of Jesus Christ, wanting to arrest them. On the way of Damascus, when the Lord Jesus Christ met him, he said, Why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Meaning Yahweh. And he said, I am Jesus. You are persecuting me. If you persecute the children of God, you are persecuting their Lord. Amen. But look at it. He was a murderer. Uh, he, he supported, he supported, he chased believers. But yes, the Lord did not condemn him. He forgave him and made him a soldier of the gospel. And therefore, he saw the he saw in his spirit mind the grace of God, the mercies of God, the loving kindness of God that forgives all sins, even murderer. Therefore, how can he be ashamed of this gospel who, uh, which saves him from murdering, which saves him from legality, which saves him from what? Self-righteousness. How can he be ashamed of that gospel? It is the power of God that saves for everyone, for everyone who believes. Therefore, the point lies in believing, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Second Corinthians Chapter 4, verse 4. Second Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 4. It says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, so that the image of God should shine in them. So, for unbelievers, the devil has blinded their spiritual mind that they cannot conceive, they cannot comprehend that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the light and the glory of God. And Jesus Christ being the image of God will shine in their heart and in their mind to receive such a great salvation that saved their own beliefs, that saved them from sin, that saved them from hell. He has blinded them. Okay, let us bring this to Christianity. Let, that, let us bring this to you and to me who is a believer and a citizen of heaven on earth. Let us bring this to us. It's no more unbeliever. We know their state. What about you? What about me? Let us, let us digest it. Amen. An unbeliever, the devil blinded them that they could not see the glorious riches of Christ Jesus who is the image of God to save them. You, a believer, you have the you have Jesus Christ, you believe in him, and you are still living in sin. So the question is, how did the light of Jesus Christ shine in your heart? How? Please think about it. Unbelievers, the devil has blinded them, so they are continuing in their sin. You, you are not an unbeliever. You have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are continuing in sin. I ask you in the name of Jesus, how did the gospel, the glorious riches of Christ Jesus, shine in your heart to come out of sin? So, you are equally blinded by the devil and you are not saved yet. You have only received a small portion of the gospel who says that by grace you have been saved through faith. You are carrying that one, uh, uh, one with you and you are not working out your salvation. Praise the name of the living God. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, Come out of known sin. Whatever you don't know, we don't talk about it. But please come out of known sins. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. It says, 
Work out your own salvation with trembling and fear of the Lord. Amen. Work out your own salvation. This you have to really pay attention because there is a lot of misinterpretation here. Amen. Work out your salvation. It's not working for your salvation. Amen. Yes. Work out your salvation is not working for salvation. Salvation has already been worked by God on the cross of Calvary and you receive a free justification in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Therefore, salvation is a free gift. But when you have received this salvation, you must work out this salvation with trembling. What does that mean? Let me give you a good example by myself. Amen? Amen? In fact, before I do that, Apostle Paul wrote this thing to a young believers. Amen? Infant Christians. When you were in the world, you practice certain things. When you are in the world, you don't have faith in God. You don't believe the word of God. You don't obey the word of God. Amen? In the world, you do as you please. You are rational and you do by sight. But when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are saved by grace, through faith, then you have to act by faith and not by sight. And this is difficult for what? Infant Christians. This is difficult for in, uh, infant Christians. To even obey the word of God, it is a difficult thing for them. That is why you must work out your salvation uh, with trembling. Amen. Your former way of life, you must work out. So you don't depend on what you see. You depend on the evil power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So to work out your own salvation is an inward of the Holy Spirit by faith to live outwardly by the obedience to the word of God. To live a godly lifestyle with self-control and living in peace with everyone and without holiness which no one shall see the Lord. So when you are a baby Christian, you must work out your salvation that now everything is by faith and by the power of the Holy Spirit to obey the known word of God. You see, this is where the trembling come in. Amen? Let me give you an example. When I was a baby Christian, I hold in me bitterness. I hold in me unforgiveness. I hold in me uh, 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 disappointment and depression. All these things were in me. And in the world, when I don't know Jesus Christ, I don't have forgiveness. I tied it and I hide it inside my heart. But when the Lord calls me, he shows me that I have to forgive those people who have offended me. And I said, no, I cannot forgive them. They have so hurt me and disappointed me and it has caused me pain. And this hatred and bitterness was in me. I was a baby Christian. So, how does this trembling come in? And the Lord showed me that myself have hurt other people. And therefore, God has forgiven me because I've accepted Jesus Christ and his blood has washed me. My sins is forgiving me. Therefore, I have to forgive others and let go all this bitterness and hatred and disappointment and depression. I have to let it go. So, when I look at the thing, I shake my head and I said, then, Lord, help me. So, I was trembling under the presence of the Holy Spirit to have faith and to obey the word of God to forgive others. So, I was trembling to live, uh, to live the old lifestyle of unforgiveness, of bitterness, of disappointment. Of depression I was struggling I was trembling under the presence of the love of God the sweet love of God the compassionate love of God the message of God I was trembling as a baby Christian to come and have faith by the power of the Holy Spirit to obey the word of the Lord so work out your own salvation with trembling is to conform to the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit through faith to obey the word of God and the fear of God. You see, fear is not of God. The word fear here means in the respect, in the highest esteem, respect to God who has saved you and brought you to a new state of life. For that reason, give him the highest reverence. 
So in my state, when I was trembling under the power of the Holy Spirit and the tremendous love of Jesus Christ, the compassionate love of Jesus Christ, that went through my body and everything, the way I saw it, it was a glory, it was shining through me. And I was trembling under that presence. The same applies to you. You should tremble in your infancy of Christianity and have, and have the Holy Spirit help you to have faith and live by faith and not by sight. Amen. So we work out our salvation. We don't work for salvation. We work out our salvation. It is our duties and responsibility to work out our salvation. Amen. Saved by grace does not exempt you from your duties and responsibility. That is why we must we must all tremble under the presence of the Holy Spirit, yeah, giving us the faith to live godly life. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Everything else, yeah, is summarized in John 3 16 up to verse 21. Please let us take it. John 3 16. You know these Bible verses very well. Amen. But there's two mystery in this world. Amen. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. Let us pause there. Look at it. God loves humanity and God loves you so much that he doesn't want you to perish in your sin. For that reason, he came as a son. That if you believe in him, that God Almighty became a son, you will not perish. And he continued, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. So God is not condemning sinner. He condemns sin itself. He condemns the practices itself. But not you. Amen. So he's not condemning you. But, uh, but to save the world through him. So God is saving you through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And listen, he says that God so loved the world that whoever, he says his holy son, whoever believes in him who shall not perish. So it means that the whole world is heading towards hell. This is what it means yet. God so loved the world that he gave um, his one and only son that whoever, whoever believes in him shall not perish. Whoever is a blank chest, it represents the whole world. So the whole world is heading towards condemnation, it's heading towards hell. And the Lord God Almighty, with his love, he became flesh and has made a way that you believe. Because if it is money, you cannot buy. The riches will buy all of them. So you believe and have faith in the cross of Jesus Christ and you are saved. He continued, verse 18, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stand condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God, one and only son. This is the verdict. This is the judgment. This is the judgment. This is the pronouncement. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. So, if you are a Christian and you are still continuing in your practices, your practices, your evil practices, your wickedness, and thinking by your grace you are saved, then this Bible verse is telling you that you already stand condemned because you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ who who's transformed you from your old way of life. Anyone who comes to the Lord Jesus Christ must be transformed. The transformation is the evidence that indeed you are in Christ. You are a follower of Jesus Christ. You are a disciplined citizen in his kingdom. The transformation tells, it proves. There must be an evident, vivid evidence, tangible evidence that those who are in the world will identify and say that you are different. Amen? Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for the fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that, it, that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So anything you are doing, you must do it in the sight of God. When you are going to commit adultery, is it in the sight of God, in the sight of your own heart, your own flesh? Your own pleasure is not in the sight of God. 
That is not good. You must stop it. You must be transformed. The gospel of Jesus Christ transforms into the glory and ever glory and ever glory in the image of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the living God. So, how can you ignore such a salvation? How, can, how shall we neglect such a salvation? If we neglect, we will not escape the punishment of sinners, which is death and eternal hell. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, the call is for believers and unbelievers alike. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. Romans chapter 10, before I bring my message to an end. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. Amen. I'm taking it from the verse 10, then I'll move to verse 9. Because this is the, this is the proper order. He says, for if we, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Amen? Amen? Then you go to the verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, my brothers and sisters, I bring you good news. The good news of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The good news of the, uh, of the kingdom. Believe and receive Jesus Christ in your heart. Believe that God Almighty raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Declare with your mouth, Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, and you will be saved. This is the saving faith and saving grace and saving confirmation. Amen? So, I am going to lead you to say what is in the Bible once again, to refresh you, to rededicate you into a new life, to lead what? a life worthy of your Savior. Amen. So this is for every one of us. Amen. Please say this after me. Abba Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Today, I believe and receive Jesus Christ into my heart. I believe and receive Jesus Christ into my heart. I believe that God Almighty raised him from the dead. I believe that God Almighty raised him from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. And I declare with my mouth, and I declare with my mouth that Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. That Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Hallelujah. If you have said this with me, the heaven rejoice. The whole, there is holiday right now in heaven because the heavenly uh, angels are going to rejoice because a sinner have come to receive the Lord Jesus Christ to live a new life that fits. Uh, the king. Praise the name of the living God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You are saved. That, that is a good news. You are saved. So how can you neglect such a great salvation? My brothers and sisters, let us embrace Christ's holiness. Let us embrace Christ's righteousness and live by his righteous standard. The Lord richly bless you and keep you and make you strong and grow your faith so that you will not hurt, you will not fall into every sin or into any sin in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me say a short prayer then we bring it to an end. Amen. Father, omnipotent and eternal God, I give you praise. I thank you for your love. Your word comes not to condemn us, but your word comes to correct us, to correct us, to teach us, to rebuke us, and to lead us into all righteousness. That is why your word comes. And it shows that you are, you are a lovely father. Every lovely father cares for their children and he counsels them. And therefore, we thank you for your great love, your great mercies, that you did not kill us in our sins. You did not condemn us in our sin, but you redeemed us by the blood of Jesus. My Lord, my God, we have received this grace. Therefore, we are praying for all unbelievers 
and we are praying for believers who has backslided because of pleasures of life. That my Lord, my God, save them. Save them. Let them come to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ that they are sinners and they need a Savior to save them from their sin. My Lord, my God, today, by your supernatural power, we snatch anyone on the verge of dying. We snatch them out of, out of the fire of hell. In Jesus' mighty name, my Lord, my God, any unbeliever who is on the edge of dying without Christ, my Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus, we snatch them out of the fire. My Lord, my God, we snatch them out of the fire. Expand their life so that they can receive Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. So that when they die, they will enter into the glory of Christ. When they die, they will enter into the glorious city of the King of Kings, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you for your power will save all souls. You don't desire in the death of sinners. You desire that all people will change their mind from their wicked ways. Therefore, we thank you and we pray that, Father, your people will preach your gospel undiluted for souls to be saved. We bless your holy name and we thank you for your faithfulness. Oh, Jesus, it is all about your faithfulness. Jesus, it is all about you. Heaven is about you. Earth is about you. Beneath the earth is about you. Jesus, for you so love us. We thank you. We thank you for your glorious love. Your love is a burning love. Oh, Jesus, that person who is listening, who does not experience mother's love, who does not experience father's love. Oh, Jesus, the hour is now. Pour your burning love on that person. Pour your burning love on that sister. Pour your burning love on that brother to experience the agape love, the burning love, the sweet love, the compassionate love, the unmerited love. Jesus, may they receive you into their heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your holy name for, my, for your people's life. I bless you, O Lord. I bless you. This hour, if anyone is in difficulties, by the love of Jesus, may you be saved in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you. The Lord keeps you. The Lord shine his favor upon you. The Lord expand your cause. The Lord bless everything you touch. The Lord bless your businesses. The Lord bless your work. The Lord bless your heart, your, your, your household. The Lord bless your food. The Lord bless your water. The Lord bless everything that concerns your life. Now and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please, we are committing the month ahead of us. We are, we are entering into now into the Lord's hand. Amen? So you have to pray yourself. Amen? And this is the this is the, uh, the prayer point. You are praying now and you are asking the Lord Jesus Christ to release his holy war angels into next month. To release his holy uh, angels of provision into next month so that all that you want to happen in next month, the holy angels of God will bring it into your way. They will connect you to your divine helpers and partners uh, partners in, in businesses. Amen. So please say after me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. These days, this day, Lord Jesus, as I enter into next month, as I enter into next month, release your holy war angels ahead of me. Release your holy war angels ahead of me. Let them go and destroy the work of wickedness. Let them go and destroy the work of the devil. Let them go and destroy the enemy of my soul. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, release your miraculous holy angels to bring miracle unto my household. To bring miracle unto my household. In Jesus' name. Jesus, release your holy angels to bring provision unto me, to bring provision unto me, to bring me financial breakthrough, to bring me financial breakthrough, to connect me to my destiny helpers in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray this prayer right now in Jesus' mighty name. Le kado so ko brege de lege de kros ko to le ki abragada. Memento goros ko brega da sakindo. Lo 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 lo. Le ke ta 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 kriga gada zaga dozo godo le ke te rege de breke te. Le son do rogo brakata jakan dozo godo breke ya brakata. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Release my Lord my God. Your holy war angels ahead of us into next man. Release. 
your holy miraculous angels ahead of us into next month, causing signs and wonders, miracles in your people's life right now, angels of provision right now in Jesus' name. Prepare next month for your people to receive their breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. I give you praise. I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shalom, people of God. The Lord richly bless you. I'm so grateful for your life and I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. And I thank you also for the support you are giving us in ministry. In fact, you are doing the work with us and the blessings we receive from God Almighty is equally yours. Therefore, the Lord richly bless you as you share and as you encourage us in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.